We are now on the work surface to knit the seven-year-old cardigan. I've already knitted the back of the cardigan of camera. I've knitted the front left of the cardigan. This is it. And also, I've knitted the sleeves. One of the sleeves, sorry. The sleeve of the left uh, side of the cardigan. That's the left sleeve of the cardigan. Yeah. So let's start, let's meet the right, the front right of the cardigan and the right sleeve. And to knit that, we need our instruction. I've printed it. I'll put the instruction on the blog and the link on the video so that you can go down to the blog and download it. We need buttons. I've not decided how many buttons yet, so I got about um, 12 to 15. So, oh, it's 14 here. Yeah. I think one is missing. No, look for it later. Okay. We need a ruler. This one by 20, this, um, sorry, 24 inch ruler, or you can use a tape measure. But I want to use the ruler to, because um, I, I want to use the ruler instead of the tape measure to when I'm fixing the button. That's when I'm I want to make the spacing for the button or buttonhole. Sometimes you might not, we might not need it, we might use um, the needles instead, we help us to calculate better. We need a cast on comb for the sleeve. I'll use okay, the small one will be all right for I think this small one will be all right for the sleeve and for the um, front, right? So I'll leave it here. You need scissors, although we have a yarn cutter on the carriage, but you might need scissors so get it. You need claw weights. You need transfer tool, especially when we are casting off. We need a latch tool, especially when um in case we drop any stitch you need a sewing needle that can go through the eye of the that's the hole of the buttons you want and a yarn can fit through the eye of the needle when we are stitching the buttons sewing thread I noticed I started a video and I just noticed that I have not um, I don't have um, a peach sewing because um, I'm using peach color yeah I don't have peach sewing thread so I got another one that can that will blend properly with it, that can blend with it. so you get a sewing thread sorry sewing thread and it's bobbing I will need a sewing machine. So we are using them. Um, you need sewing pins. We need a one by one needle pusher. Of course, we need a knitting machine. And it's carriage. Remove this. We need to do it with a car with a carriage and the yarn. This is this is Robin brand. It's hundred percent acrylic decay yarn. That's double knit. The shade lot is um, one thirty seven. I don't know if this is peach or melba. I can't uh, remember. But the shade lot is one thirty seven. 
you need a walking roll counter to keep track of your rolls and on your carriage you need the uh, the rock um count thing trigger to be working and last of all it's optional you need i um sorry ravel cord And if you want, you can use a waist yarn because you need rubber cord, you need a waist yarn. So I'll use the, those white yarn as a waist yarn. I use a white yarn as a waist yarn. And I use a rubber cord. You can also cast on without using rubber cord. But I'm just going to use rubber cord. So for the Let's start the front right. I think I should start with the sleeve first. Oh, front right, front right. Okay, let's start with the front right. The instruction on the front right says I should cast on 44 stitches. So row one I'll cast on 44 then row two to row 121 I'll just continue knitting and when I get to before I knit row 122 before I knit row 122 I'll as soon as I finish knitting row 121 I'll make a decrease before I need row 122. So let's cast on and start knitting. Set 44. So to be, just take the camera closer and focus it on the needle bed. Okay. Our carriage, our knitting is stuck in it. So for our carriage, so the left hand side of the carriage is going to be on the triangle and the right hand side of the carriage is going to be on the triangle. Then the cam lever is going to be on zero. I'm using tension seven. Let me check my... I just want to check the pattern to make sure that's what is on it. Oh, sorry. I'm using tension 8. That's why it's good to... It's here. Let me show you. The information it says I'm using a tension 8 on the stitch die. That is why I like inputting those information when I'm designing. So I'll set my, get my waist yarn, I don't need to cast on, um, I don't need to put it on the mast. Push 24 needles on the right to work position and push 20, sorry, 22 needles on the right to work position and push 22 needles on the left to walk position and with my one by one needle pusher I'll place it on the can be from the left or right I'll place it on the second needle and push every alternate needle back to non working position because I want to do a one by one um, needle rib for the welt so this is what I want to do so I push 
and because it's an even number it will be one needle short so instead of 22 I'll bring out 23 needles now I'll bring one needle out because I don't want uh, the needles to be so that's an even number of needles I'm not going to read I'm not going to change the I'm not going to change the numbers on my um, row counter yet because I'm just knitting I'm just um, trying to make use the waist yarn before I cast on casting on the waist yarn so in the carriage going to put the yarn in then I'll reduce the stitch die first because I'm casting on I'll reduce the stitch die to I'll make it between 7 and 8 7.5 or the second dot I think that second dot is alright from left to right I'm just going to sorry right to left I'm gonna cast I'm going to knit and then with the cast on comb I will hang my cast on comb on the loop Then the tail of the yarn, I'm going to hang it on this clip here. I'll need a few rows. With the waist here. And end the car and the carriage. I will end on the left. You can see the carriage on the left. I'll take the waist yarn, snip the yarn, take the waist yarn, take the waist yarn of the car carriage. And make sure there's no knot in your ravel cord. There's a knot in my ravel cord. Try and lose every knot. It's going to be difficult for you to pull out of the knit. So with the ravel cord, place it in the carriage. In the yarn feeder of the carriage. It's very thin. I know you can hope you can see it and then shut hold the ravel cord and knit one row from left to right and your carriage will end on the right then remove the yarn from the carriage Sorry, the ravel cord from the carriage. I'm just going to go closer and we'll have to secure the la this first um, ravel cord. I'm going to wind it al around the hook of this uh, cast on comb just to give it a grip here. Oh, wait. And hang the tail of the second um, this end tail. Hang it on the clip. For the welt, 
The white is 14 rows. Just going to show that. It's a cast on left needle. For oh, so let me see what that was. Sorry, before I give you the wrong, before I give you the wrong information. Okay. <laughs> Although this is for the back, but the welt is, I'm using the same welt for the sleeve to, for the sleeve, the waist, and the, uh, Yes, I think the sleeves, the sleeve and the wrist. So we need 14 rows of welt. Set your row counter. When you set the row counter to zero, 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 and we need to need some. Um, 14 rows of welt. Because it's mock rib, mock rib you need to fold. So we, instead of um, 14 rows of welt, we need to need 28 rows. And when we fold, one side will be 14 and the other side will be 14 because we are making a mock rib. So taking a look at the mast. I've already set the mask and the tension is 3 on the mask. So we've set our row counter to zero zero zero. Now we need to need we need to need um twenty-eight rows. Twenty-eight rows. Fix your yarn in the yarn carriage for you start if not all stitches will drop. You can put it in any slot because you're not doing any um, pattern or should I say ferrari. Shut the door of those up. Oh, the yarn door or the yarn um, slot door of the carriage. And then knit. You can hold the yarn underneath so that it helps so that it has it has a grip. Just to weigh down underneath with your finger until you move until you can knit. So let's knit 28 rows. I'll be fast with this now. Do make sure your carriage pa passes the row counter. You need it to count for you.
So we've knitted 28 rows. Oh, it just a loop here. Didn't it properly there? But there's no problem. It's the world. It's going to cover. Now we need to form our world. With a one by three needle transfer to, I'm using the one side. I'm going to for, go up and pick for our welds. So let's go closer. But before then, there's something I want to explain. If you take a look at the needle bed, you will notice that some needles, we push some needles to non-working position when we use, when we are casting them. So those alternate needles, we are going to pick the loop, all this loop here, and place we'll place them on the coordinating needles that are that are in non-working position. But I don't have a stitch on them. So I'll, play, I'll pick one from the middle. So that I have equal one going to the left and to the right. So for this one. Okay, I want you to see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm just going to line it. And this is the coordinated one. Okay. So I picked the loop here, this first loop here. That's the loop, the first um, peach color yarn loop, the one after the ravel cord. So I'll pick that. And if you notice, there's another loop here. There's an, it's coordinating up our loop is here, up here. I just want, can we go closer please? Okay. This is coordinating upper loop. Some people do not pick this, but I do love picking mine. So you can pick yours and you have two loops. Then I'll pick, I'll pull the needle from non-working position and hang it. Just wanted to see. So we'll do same for the others. In case you missed that, let me pick a second one first. Then we'll do the other ones quickly. Oh, I've dropped this. So you pick the first loop before the, um after the ravel cord then you pick its coordinating upper loop and hang it on its coordinating needle that is in non-working position so the loops you hang the loops on the needles that are not in working that is in non-working position that don't have stitches on them. So just pick them. Remember to pick the upper loop if you want to. I love picking them because it's nice when you want to make a band for skirt. And you want to slip um, the elastic in it or head, headband. If you pick them. You have a neat finishing. Okay, let's pick the last loop first, and then we'll go to pick. We'll go and pick the first loop. This is the last loop. Okay, this is the second to last loop. And for this last loop, when you pick it, 
and pick is a coordinating upper you hang it. But I do love extending the first the last loop into the first um the last needle. It's after now you can omit that. But that's my own um, style. I like uh, extending it the last loop. That's after I hang, I will do the same on the other. So let's pick this first loop here. You see the ravel cord? You have to pick this loop that the ravel cord is hanging on. If not, your work you are going to your work is going to lose. So pick up pick that loop. Let me pick this ones first. Then I'll pick those ones. Pick that one. And this last loop that the ravel cord is hanging on, you have to pick it and hang it on the first needle. We finished picking the loop for the welt to form our welt. So it's time for us to need the body, the f body of the cardigan. Set your row count to zero, zero, zero. I've already done mine. Then on the, the stitch die, set it to eight because we want to need the body. And if we take a look at the instruction, it says that we're going to need row two to row, sorry, row one. To row one to one, we are just going to knit it. Then we'll make our changes in row 122. So before we knit row 122, we need to decrease seven stitches at the left. I'll knit a few row, then I'll knit um, the other row of camera until I get to row 121 before I make the alteration or the decrease. I'll put on the camera and you see how we make the decrease and we'll continue knitting from there. Remember to set your row counter to zero, zero, zero. So that I start counting the bodies for you. And your stitch dial on eight. And I'll knit a few rows. I get to 121. Knitted 10 rows. Let's take a look at the car sorry the row counter. You can see it there. I'm going to knit the other rows until I get to 121. Then I'll put on the camera. So that we can do the shaping for the neck. Sorry for the armhole and then the neck. So we are on the 120th row. I'll need the 121st row or 121 row. Then we'll decrease. It says here, you know we are working on the front right. It says that we should decrease when knitting the next row, decrease seven at left. So we do the decrease before we need the 122nd row 
and it's so nice for us because the te the yarn feeder the yarn is coming from the left hand side and that's where we are decreasing so we decrease seven decreasing seven stitches So what we do, we bring the first needle out We we'll bring the first needle out We we'll wind the yarn around the hook of the first needle and then we we'll manually knit it Then the stitch of the second needle, we we'll move it into the Move it onto the first needle so that we have two stitches on the first needle and then we move both stitches from the both stitches from the first needle move it to the second needle and we move the first needle out of work position wind the yarn around the hook of this new first needle which is the second needle the previous second needle which is now the first needle just okay Wind the yarn around the hook of this first needle, the new first needle, which was previously the second needle, and then you manually knit it. So I'm just trying to make sure the yarn don't split. And you manually knit it. We'll repeat it again for the remaining needles. Move this stitch from the second needle, move it onto the first, move both stitches from the first, move them back into the second while you move the first needle out of work position. Wind the yarn around the hook of this new first needle, which was previously a second needle, which was previously the second needle. And then you manually knit it. Don't make your stitch too tight. And don't make it too loose. We'll do the same again. I want to count to make sure I'm still on the right. Uh, I've not decreased more than required. Two, four, six. Okay. So this is sixth needle. This is seventh. <laughs> Two, four, six. Okay. Six. Okay, this six needle. This is seventh one. We manually need it. We have to. We need to decrease seven needles so after decreasing this one 
we've just decreased six uh, six needles then for the seventh one you move the stitch from the second onto the first move both stitches back onto the second move the first out of work position you do not knit it manually the carriage will do the job when the carriage moves from left to right so now the carriage is going to move and it's going to knit it for us if you, you see now if you take a look at it you see that there is no hole if we had manually knitted it and then the carriage moves it would have given this first needle here two rows that means we'll have hole in our work. So I'm going to need this 122, uh, 123, 124. So row 125, before we need row 125, it says we should decrease at left, one stitch at left. I'm just going to move the second stitch from the second needle to the first, move both stitches back onto the second needle and remove the first out of work position. It's just one stitch, so there's no problem moving it like that and leaving it. If it were more, would have done it while we had the tail of the yarn or the yarn feeding from this um, from the side that the yarn is feeding from. So I need up to one hundred and twenty-nine. And we need to decrease one at left. It depends on you. You can just move the stitches. Sorry, you can just move the stitch of the second needle into the first and move both of them there. Or you can knit the first needle first manually need the first needle then before you move the stitches to do the decrease remember anyone the one you do on the left hand side you have to repeat it on the other side of the garment you want your garment to match properly so Always remember the decrease, the method of decrease. So 131 to 134, I'm going to need. So one, sorry, 131 to 134, I'm going to need. And then we decrease one stitch at left. This time I'm just going to move, stitch from the second needle to the first, as usual, our usual decrease. To do another decrease again so I'm on 
So I'm on 144 now. I have to do another decrease on the left. We'll soon start doing a decrease on the right for the neck. So I have to knit from 146 to 162 before we start shaping for the... Okay, that's here. 146 to 162 before we start shaping for the neck. And once we start, once I do the shaping for the neck, I have to turn off the camera. So just wait for 160. It's 162 now. You can see the row counter says it. Now it's time to shape the neck. The neck. Okay. So for the neck, we're going to decrease three at right. We'll, we'll do the same decrease until we get to the end then cast off just follow the instruction so it says three at right i don't know if you saw that let me before we need 163 so we should decrease three at right so my row counter shows 162. I'm going to do the decrease before we need 163. And like we did for the armhole, I'm going to do the same here. Push the first needle out, wind the yarn around the hook of the first needle and manually knit it. Move the stitch of the second needle onto the first. Move both stitches back onto the second and then manually knit the knit both stitches on the new first needle. Why the actual first needle you move it out of work position? Now you move the stitch of the second needle, you move it to the first needle, move both stitches onto the second needle, move the first needle which is now empty move it to non-working position wind the yarn around the new first needle which which has two stitches now and manually knit it so this is third stitch Let's see i think that's the third one Okay, I'm going to need a uh, decrease four on this side. The reason is because when we are casting on, you remember when we're casting on the numbers of needles we are um we did it was an even number, then I added one because when we use the one by one needle pusher, if you remember we use the one by one needle pusher to push the needle back. We were now short of one needle, so I brought out the brought out another needle to make it an odd number, so that the needle we so that we can make our mock rib without losing a stitch. So I I didn't reduce and uh, decrease and remove that needle since I have to remove it now. So I'm just going to remove that. I think I've done that now. So this is the last stitch to decrease. You don't need to manually knit this one. You just move the stitch of the second onto the first. Move both stitches back onto the second needle. Move the first needle out of work position. And then you leave it. The carriage will do the knitting. So that's it. We are now shaping the neck of the cardigan.
So I'm going that's 163 and 164. We are going to do another decrease on 164. So when meeting the next row, decrease two at right. So it's time to decrease another two at right. I'll do the same decrease and then I'll put out the camera because it's the same decrease we'll be doing. You just need to follow the instruction. As I said earlier, I'll put the instruction on the blog. You go there and download it. So continue until it's time for us to cast off. But before I put up the camera, I just want you to see how far we've knitted. So this is the front of the gamut. So when we get to row, almost to the last row, 180, let me say 189, I'll put on the camera so that we can do the cast off. And then we'll knit the sleeve. Our row counter shows 180. And on the instruction, it says that we have to decrease one at right before we need 181 row. I've already decreased that one and we're going to need one from row, we're going to need from row 181 to 191 before we cast off. So I just need that now. So this is 91. Have it here. So row 182 to 191 as row 181 without the shaping. Then cast off remainder. So it's time for us to cast off and then we'll finish knitting the piece. I'll just show you my row counter. It says 191. I'm going to cast off in the same manner. You can take the yarn out of the yarn out of the carriage now. So I'll bring the first needle, the same way we decreased, is the same way we are casting off. Bring the first needle out, wind the yarn around the hook of the first needle and manually knit it. Stitch off the second needle, move to the first needle, move both stitches from the first needle back to the second needle, remove the first needle out of work position. Wind the yarn around the needle with both stitches now and manually knit it. Stitch of the second, move to the first, move both stitches back onto the second needle. Wind the yarn around the hook of the single, second needle and manually knit it. Continue the process and don't forget to move the needle without stitch to non-working position.
I dropped the stitches, so I'm just going to pick it. And this is the last stitch so we do same and then we are left with a hoop a loop just going to can break the yarn with your hand then the tail of the yarn pass it through the hoop uh, sorry <laughs> pass it through the loop and just pull it tighten it and that's all so here we have our knitted garments Take off the cast on comb from the waist yarn. Then pull the ravel cord, just pull it and it will and the waist yarn will drop. If there's no knot. To come out easily, your, the waist yarn will drop and you have a nice welt. To close the welt, put your transfer tool in the welt. You put in the opening and you just pull to close. So here is the knitted ga the garment we just knitted. That's the front right of the cardigan. We'll be knitting the sleeves next, and then after knitting the sleeves, we'll progress to the sewing machine and stitch it before we come for the neck band and the button hole so here's the front right of the cardigan and i'm going to bring the front left of the cardigan It's time for us to start knitting the right sleeve of the garment. So to knit it, we're going to cast on um, 56 needles. 
and then we'll knit until we'll, we'll cast on 56 needles make our welt then we'll our welt then we'll knit row row one to row 19 before we make any changes by increasing one on the left and one on the right so as you know we're making a welt of 14 rows but because it's mock rib we are making a welt of um does it here so because it's mock rib I'm just trying to get something okay because we are making a mock rib we need 28 rows that's one by one uh, mock rib we need 28 rows then we'll fold it and it will become 14 rows make our words but this is not in um, numbers of needles to cast on this is just the world we just got this information for the world because we're making as if you remember we're making the back the front the back the front and the sleeves the world of the back front and sleeves the same um the same length okay let's start let me push um how many needles they came okay 56 needles so 50 will be 25 and 25 then we add six to it and i will add, i want to add one extra needle I'll tell you the reason why when I'm casting up so um, this uh, 50 needles so add two to the left two to the right of 22 to the left so we're going to add 28 needles we we'll push 28 needles to the left and 28 needles to the right so this uh, 30 29 28 okay And um, this is 28. Okay, we've pushed 28 needles to the left to 28 needles to the right to make 56 needles. But if we use our one by one push needle pusher, we'll just go closer. If you place your one by one needle pusher and you push, push uh, place your one by one needle pusher from on the second needle and push every alternate needle or even number of needles back okay oh, i've pushed um the wrong one okay you p place it straight so that i don't take any other needle like what i, <laughs> I just made a mistake by slanting it a bit okay place it straight and push every alternate needle back if you get to the last needle You'll find out that the last needle will move because it's an even number needle. This the 28 needle on the right. It's moving because it moved to the non-working position because it's an even number needle. But we need one to complete. So I'll bring up the 29th needle. When it's time for us to increase on left or right, we won't increase on one side that we have already increased on. Or we can alternatively we what we can do is that once we finish casting on we can decrease just move one needle in and get the correct number of needles and start working with that so here's my waist yarn and i'm going to as i did for the front of the sleeve put it in the carriage so i'm going to put the yarn in the carriage stitch die on um the second dot the second dot i just as we did for the um back okay and then we start we just cast on knit one row first from left to right make sure you have a long tail so that you can Sorry, make sure the yarn has a long tail so that we can hang uh, the cast on comb. We can uh, clip the yarn of the cast on comb to create a kind of a nice weight here. 
So I'm just going to clip it. Yeah. So I'm going to need row one. So I'm going to need row one. I'm going to need ten rows, sorry. Before we use the ten or eleven though. Okay, we're going to need some rows and end with the carriage on the left before we use the rubber coat. Just take my yarn off the carriage and put my ravel cord in. Going to turn it, turn to the carriage now. Place my ravel cord in. Let's go closer. So I'm trying to lose any knot. If there, you have knots in your ravel cord, make sure you lose them. That's what I'm trying to do. I should have prepared that earlier before we started knitting. It just give me some minutes and I'll put it. So insert the ravel cord into the yarn feeder of the carriage and then hold, making a tension with your finger by holding the ravel cord yarn but you allow it to as it needs it as it needs you release it a little so that it can um, knit properly knit from left to right make sure it has a long tail of yarn And knit from left to right. You can wind the tail of the ravel cord around this last um, hook of the cast on comb and let's start knitting our of the world of our sleeve. But before we knit, we need to set our carriage. I'm going to just set it back to eight. No, okay, sorry, it's still going to be on seven points. Sorry. Sorry about that. It's the body. So when we are knitting the body of the sleeve that we knit it on it. It's a, um, then you need to set the your row counter. Set it to zero, zero, zero. You want it to count the number of what? You're going to need 20. Is it 28 or so? I'll check again. Mm. Okay, 28. Put the yarn in the yarn feeder. Put the yarn, yarn feeder and shut. Let's start knitting. If it's not knitting properly at the end, you can hang your claw weights 
just hand claw it there and um, to give it a nice weight for it to be. The edges are not knitting properly, hang the claw it. Seven and twenty eight. Twenty eight. Our counter shows twenty eight. As we did for the back of the uh, sorry, uh, for, for the front, the front right also. As we did, we're going to do the same here. We are going to pick out uh, the loop. Just going to adjust the camera so that you see. We've done it before, so I'll be fast about it. You pick the loop and you hang. I'm just picking the middle one just to line it. Pick the lower and the upper loop. Then you pull the needles in case you start um you just started you start halfway that's why i'm read um i'm doing this then you pull the needle this coordinating needle from the non-working position and you hang both loops and you can see it's coordinating needles do not have stitches on it so this the loop you hang will be the stitch that will be on it so you hang both loops on it. Some people do hang one, but I prefer hanging both. That is, I hang the lower and the upper loop. Some people just hang this lower loop, the loop before the, um, after the rubber cord. So I'll be fast about this because we've done it before in the, in, in the beginning of this video. We still have neck bands to do and um, the button hook. So I need to be very, very fast. After picking the last loop and hanging it. Okay, let me show you that again. After picking the last loop and hanging it on that the last loop on the left, on, sorry on the right, I take the lower loop and extend it into the last needle. The last needle has stitches on it, so I just hang it. I there's no I just prefer doing it. That's my own um, way of doing my that's my own style. I just prefer doing it that. It's not compulsory that you should do it. But I just prefer doing that particular one to make a straight band. It helps, especially when you're making head headbands and um. Uh, I forgot thing for bands for skirts. And you're using one by one the needle or mock rib. Then this loop here, you have to hang it on the. Okay, after picking this loop, the one. You have to, after picking this loop, there's a stitch you need to hang. If you see the this last stitch here, those first one is kind of hidden because the cord is in it. 
Well, you know because the, this eye cord is in it. So you have to pick it and hang it. You don't want your stitch to lose. That one is compulsory. Then push all needles. Now our needles are complete. You push all needles to working position. Oh, I basically do one here. Just going to. So you push all needles to working position. This way we change our carriage. Let's change our carriage first. We change our car the stitch down our carriage to eight because you're going to need the bodies of the sleeve. And then our row counter goes to zero, zero, zero. And we'll start knitting the bodies of the sleeve. I'll need few rows. I'll put on the camera. When it's time for shaping, I'll put on the camera. It said knit cast on 56. Row 1, you need row 2 to row 19, you need. Then you increase one on the left and one on the right. So let's knit that. When we are on row 19, okay. We are going to increase it's on row 19 now we need to increase um a stitch on the left and a stitch on the right but i'm not going to increase on the right that's because we've already increased in the beginning remember when i was casting the welt i made one extra stitch because um we had to take one because of the needle pressure we used and it kind of work. So what I'm going to do now is to increase one on the right. And because I didn't do that, when we are knitting to another row, I will have to do that thing. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to increase without. Uh, sorry, I'll return it back before I start. I didn't know the camera was far off. Okay. So you take the last needle which is this you move this stitch onto a new needle towards the left the needle is not uh, it's in non-working position you bring it out of non-working position so you move this stitch then if you take a closer look you will see okay you will see um this heel here of the yarn you take it with your transfer to take it and hang it on back on the first needle. Now you've increased. If you notice, there's no space. We are not making eyelets. So there's no space. We have a complete needle. We just move one needle, pick the heel and place it back on the first needle. Because we move the stitch of the first needle to a different needle. Because that's because we are increasing. Okay. Um. Then we we'll need um so we have to need now on to you. 38 row then we increase one to the left and one to the right my yarn is almost finished i'm just going to okay oh let me still need this uh finish it properly so i'm not left with tiny yarns all around well i can just snip it and use this one for the buttonhole when i'm sticking it okay that's nice i can save it and use it for buttonholes let me see. 
just trying to replace uh, to replace new yarn and, Okay, now we can knit. Just replace my yarn. It's almost finished. So we need um, to roll, let me not forget that, to roll 38. Oh, there's a tight stitch here. Okay, up. the yarn is knotted here. I didn't see it on time, so I'll have to lose that row. I'm just going to lose, and I'll need to row 33 again. I've taken my row counter back to 33. I just needed row 34 and found out that there's a knot in the yarn here. Just going to use that, okay? You can take your carriage to the other side, but don't move it across your work like a when it's in. A, you just take your carriage off the knitting machine and move it to the other side. If you want to move it across your work, make sure you release the lever and let it so that I don't need. But to be very careful, don't try it. Don't try it if you know you have not, uh, you are not sure if your lever is released. But me, I've released it. I'm just going to move it across the needle bed. You can see that the lever is released. If you don't do that, if you don't release your lever, your work is going to drop to the floor and you have to start picking again. You start picking um, the stitches. So I've just closed the... You can see the lever is... That's why I'm able to move it across the needle bed. But I do advise you, but don't just try it if you play with it. Uh, play with your needle bed when you have uh, some stitches on. And you can try that first before you do it. But preferably, if you, have, if you don't want to try, just move it to the... Just take your carriage off the needle bed and move it to the other side of the needle bed. So I'm just going to close the lever. Place my yarn in. And knit row 33 to 34. Then I'll make a knot here. I don't want the stitch to lose. So I'll make a knot. Just a simple knot. Okay, we still have to need to 38. And um, Thirty-seven and a half. 
petty bits. So this is the second one I'll do before I um, put turn off the camera. It says um, it's my transfer. So it says as row twenty. Okay, when knitting next row, increase one at left and one at right. That's before we need to row thirty one. And I'll carry our row counter shows thirty eight. So before we need to row 39, that's what we're going to increase one on the left and one on the right. Now let's increase on the left first, then we increase on the right before we need. So I will take the stitch from the first needle, move it onto a new needle that is in non-working position. I will bring that needle to working position. Then if you notice there's a heel on that stitch that we moved, we'll take that heel of the stitch and move it onto the first needle we have increased. We move to the right hand side of the needle bed because we are increasing one on the left, on the left and one on the right. So we're going to do the same. I'm going to move the which is the first stitch now, move it to the non-working the needle in non-working position and pull that needle to working position. Then if you notice there's a heel here, take the heel of the stitch. Just trying to be careful. No, this hooks. Take the heel and hang it on this uh, the previous first needle, which we moved the the previous first needle. Move. You can just push on and push the needles to. Working position, and it your stitch will move backward. So I'm going to knit, and then I'll turn. I'll just knit two rows. Then I'll turn off the camera. But before I turn it off, I have. Uh, let me tell you when I'll put it. Put the camera on. I'll put it on um, when we finish knitting row one hundred and forty-one. So that we can do the decrease on the left. Start doing the shaping for the sleeve. Although I have a previous um, video on how to knit sleeve, I still want to do it in this video so that you know that we can start and finish a knit wear on our knitting machine. I want just to show how to knit this um, cardigan. That was my that's my promise, and I'm, I want to fulfill that. Okay, so I'll knit until. I need to row 39 until I get to row 141 of camera. Then I'll turn on the, on the camera and we'll do the shaping. We need this and to maybe 144 on camera. Then I'll turn off the cam turn off the camera again and knit until we get to row 119 before we do the cast off. Okay, so let's um knit. Row 49 and uh, 39 and 40. And let me turn off the camera. 39. We are now row 141, and you can see it on our row counter. So I'm um, let me bring um, we're going to decrease so when meeting the next row decrease six at sorry decrease six stitches at left so before we need 100 row 142 we're going to decrease six stitches at left and after we need row 142 we decrease six six stitches at right 
So um, our carriage is on the left now. We have to decrease that. The six. Just going to push this, push them slightly off the to the upper working position. The six stitches that we are decreasing, just pushing them to a power pin position. We are decreasing at the left now, then we decrease the right. For the first needle, you've seen how we did the decrease for the armhole for um the armhole for the front sleeve of the cardigan. So you are going to do the same because we want it to match. If you do a different set um, kind of decrease, your sleeve is not going to match because it's a setting sleeve. Your sleeves won't match. So make sure you do the same um, technique you did for decreasing when you were decreasing for the armhole of the body of the sweater or cardigan you did you are doing same for the sleeve the first push the first needle to upper working position wrap the yarn around the hook of the first needle and manually knit it make sure it's not too tight and not too loose take the stitch of the second needle move it onto the stitch or to move it onto the first needle so that there are two stitches on the first needle move both stitches from the first needle onto the second needle and push the first needle out of work position because we are decreasing so the needles need to reduce in, in numbers then you manually knit both stitches on the there's a new first needle now. Both stitches that are on this new ne first needle manually knit it. We'll do the same. Take the stitch of the second needle, move it onto the first needle, move both stitches from the first needle back onto the second needle. Move the first needle out of work position because you are decreasing and the numbers of stitches need to decrease. If not, if you don't move it, it can create confusion. Then wrap the yarn around the stitch around the new first needle and manually knit both stitches that are on the first needle. Do same. Take the stitch of the second needle, move it onto the first, move both stitches and move them back onto the second needle. Wrap the yarn around the stitch of this new first needle and manually knit it. So I'll do the other ones. I have to be fast, I've repeated. <laughs> Then this is the sixth needle. We've manually knitted it and we need to remove the stitch to make it the six. You said the pattern says decrease six stitches. So now we move this is the seventh needle. We have to decrease six stitches. So six empty needles. Take the stitch of the seventh needle to the sixth this uh, needle to the sixth needle move both stitches on the sixth needle move it to the seventh needle move the sixth stitch the sixth needle out of work position this time you don't knit it the carriage will do the knitting this is because if you knit it it's going to create one row and when the carriage moves across to knit it's going to create another row making hole in your work we are not making eyelids. We are decreasing. So you need from right, left to right. Now let's decrease 
on the right. As it says, just to refresh ourselves with the pattern, don't make errors. When knitting, we've just knitted row 142 because we decrease on the left. So it's time to do this decrease on the right. So when knitting the next row, decrease 6 stitches at right. So before we knit, we have to do our decrease. And then knit row 143. Push the first needle stitch on the needle, manually knit it. Take the stitch of the second needle, move it onto the first needle, move both stitches of the first needle back to the second. I move the first needle out of work position because you are decreasing and your needles need to decrease. The numbers of needles need to reduce. Then you manually need those stitches and I'll do this because we have done the same. Okay, let me count now. I just so I'm gonna count this is um uh, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm supposed to push six needles, yes. Okay, I've done one, so I'm doing the second now. If you keep track of your needles, you'll be able you know when um, you've decreased, but it's nice to just push the needles you are decreasing out. That way, you know which you have um, the decrease, the numbers of needles that you've decreased. So this is the sixth. And I'll manually knit it and move the stitch and move the stitch of the sixth, seventh needle to the sixth and move both stitches to the seventh. The carriage will do the knitting. And I'll knit. Okay, we've done um so now it says we should decrease one on the left and on the right because we need to shape the cap of the sleeve we, this is the armhole and then we'll start shaping until it makes a kind of um hemisphere or circular dome here make a kind of dome on top okay let's start um So, okay, 143. Before we need 144, we have to decrease one on the left and one on the right. So, I'll do that decrease and turn off the camera and knit until we get to row 191 because it's the same decrease all through. We have to be repeating it and uh, that's going to take a lot of time. They will cast I'll knit and when I get to row 191 I'll put on the camera so that will cast off. So now let's do the decorates. You can just move both together that if you have done that kind of um it does a decrease um technique you did when knitting the bodies or can manually knit the first needle then move the stitch on the second needle to the first and move both stitches from the first needle to the second and move the first needle out of work position 
then on this side because the yarn i'm feeding is not on the right hand side we're just going to do this other sort of decrease which we did for the bodies we just Oh, sorry, I didn't know it's not, it wasn't showing. <laughs> sorry, I'll return it and uh, do it all over again. Okay, now we need to do a decrease here. Take the stitch of the second needle, move it onto the first needle. Like there are two stitches there. And you move both stitches back onto the second needle. Move the first needle out of work position. If not, when you knit across, it's going to have a stitch on it. That's why you have to remove the first um, the needle you have decreased out of um, work position. So neat. And we'll continue doing such decrease until we get until the end of the until the end of the gamut. So this one hundred and forty four. After we need 145, we'll do decrease and so on till we get to this. So I'll turn off the camera and need this off camera and put off the cam put on the camera when we get to 191 so that we can cast off. So we've, um, we are now on 190, row 190. I'm just going to knit one across to make it 191 and start casting off. You can see the length. I used um, the claw weight to add weight to it so that the end stitches can knit properly. So let's go closer and start casting off. I'll take the yarn out of the yarn feeder of the carriage. Let me just show you my raw counter. You see it's 191. And then we'll start cutting off. First stitch. The first stitch we manually knit it. The second stitch we move the stitch of the second needle. Move it onto the first needle, move both stitches from the first needle back onto the second needle and we put the first needle out of work position, wind the yarn around the hook of the second needle and then we'll manually knit it. Oh sorry, the stitch of the first needle which is which was previously the second needle. We continue in that manner, taking the second stitch onto the first needle, taking both stitches from the first needle back onto the second. Remove the first needle out of work position because you are decreasing. Wind the yarn around the new first needle and then we manually knit it. We'll continue until we've casted off all stitches. Don't stretch your your knit don't stretch it too much you don't want a slagging knit, um, cap sleeve cap just going to take the claw widths off giving it's creating too much weight
I just want to check I just want to make sure I didn't drop a stitch. This one look too light here. And that's the last stitch. We are with a loop now. So I'm going to break off the yarn using my hand. Then the last loop, just try to tail off the yarn through and secure it. So here's our knitted sleeve. You can see the welt, the waist yarn, the eye, the eye, um, sorry, ravel cord, and the, the welt and the bodies of the sleeve. So we meet on the work surface. We always pin them together we we'll pin the back front and sleeves together using the sewing pin and then we'll progress to the sewing machine to stitch then we'll come back to the work surface um, to the knitting machine again and knit the band for the neck and the um, buttonholes band Just take this off before we go to the work surface to if there's no knot in your yarn, just in your sorry um ravel cord, just pull it and it will come out freely. Once it comes out, the waist yarn will separate from the knit, the knitted garment. So let's go to the work surface and pin, then we'll sew. So here is the knitted seven year old cardigan. This is the back. This is um these are the sleeves, the front and um the left and the right sleeves. Then this is the front, I think this is the front left, and this one is the front right. Okay, yes, this is the armhole. So this is the front left and this is the front right. What we're going to do first is to line it properly, right side facing right side, and then you pin. What I normally do is that to line, make sure the right side facing right side starts from the armhole. You can pin there. Normally, first place you're supposed to okay no. Right side facing right side, then you pin. The first place you're going to pin is the shoulder. Going to line the shoulder properly and we'll pin. But to make sure you don't use the wrong side, you can line it first with the armhole. Line it at the arm, armhole first, then make sure it fits properly and right side facing right side. Then you move to the shoulder and you pin. Then we'll go to the sewing machine, we stitch that together. I'm going to pin both sides and this for this. Remember, right side facing right side, I'm whole line properly. Pin the shoulders. 
together. That's the front shoulder to the back shoulder of the garment. So we've pinned and I'm just going to, apart from this, I'm going to pin the other side quickly. So to pin this side, that side, now when I'm on the knitting machine, uh, so, sorry, sewing machine, I'm just going to do some quick run. Here's the sleeve. What I normally do is fold it in half. Line the armhole together. Just take one of the sleeves, line the armhole together, and you have a nice, you have the middle here. I love placing a pin here. This is where I'll line it. When I finish stitching, I'll line it to this uh, line, that's this um, mark here, where the shoulder seam, that's I'm going to line it to the shoulder seam. And then, I'll stitch, I'll pin, and we'll stitch. So I'm just going to pin this one halfway because I might not uh, video this part again. Let me do it. We still have the neck band. After this, we'll now knit the neck band and then the buttonhole band. You repeat it for the other side. So I'll do just one side and then you repeat it for the other side. That's the other side of the sleeve. We're just going to do just one side. So I've lined the back. This is the sleeve of the back. I'm going to line it. I've Sorry, I've lined it. And on the other side, you're going to do the same. Continue, align the armhole and start from the arm and from the armhole I'll make it. So now you can see that it's taking shape. It's, by the time we finish, this coils will be taken care of. Then after that, you're going to line the armhole. After we finish stitching, we're going to line it up again, like so. On the sleeve, we start from the sleeve. We'll line the welt together of one sleeve. And then we'll seam it down to enclose one part. Then we'll work on the second side. So I'll do that off camera. Then we'll come back to the camera. When we finish sewing, we'll come back to the camera. We'll go to the sewing machine now, I'll sew. Then we'll come back here and I'll line these other parts and we'll do that. Then I'll do this other side of camera before we start doing the welt sorry before we start doing the uh, neck band and the button hole i've threaded the sewing machine 
the stitch that I'll be using is either stitch 5 or stitch 6 just a simple back stitch you can use the overlocking stitch if you want to just going to focus on the knitting so on the sewing machine I've pinned it straight because I want it to help me to stretch the knit or the knitted garment. I'm just going to place it under. Make sure it's not bulky. So I'm going to use some. Um, so I'm going to go in. You don't want your stitch to be bulky. So it's going to be about in two centimeters. Uh, sorry, I said two centimeters, two millimeters. You're stitching on two millimeter um, seam allowance or so. And this tail of yarn is going to help me. If it's not fitting properly, I'll just pull, tug on it or pull on it and uh, it's going to move then your simple back stitch to lock the stick in or your sewing do same for this side I'll go for this and do the edge of oh, sorry the armhole now the sleeve the armhole I'm starting from the armhole this is my favorite machine for now
Okay, that's it. So here's our cardigan, wrong side out, right side in. It's already taking shape. I left this other side, the thing that's about the right. That's the right. I left it so that we can uh, we we'll stitch it. No, we'll finish stitching around the shoulder armhole of the cardigan. Now we need to secure the side seams. For the sleeve and for the bodies so to do that to make sure your stitch line prop um, to make sure it's perfect first of all take the this is a sleeve and um, this is for the front of the cardigan and this is the front part of the sleeve so make sure we have the same meat the armhole underarm take it and line it with the one of the back then you pin there once that part is lined don't know if you can see it or just once that part is lined this is the sleeve and this is the bodies of the cardigan once this part is lined then go to the welt. You can take the waist or you just line it. Except you, you did an asymmetrical design, then you can do what you want. So you line it there and um, you want to make sure it lines properly. Leave this middle, then go back, to, then you go to the waist and you line well to well, edge to edge. And once you finish lining that, then you can start arranging the bodies. You make sure they line properly. Now you've all you've lined the essential parts the, of the design, the armhole, the well. Then you can now face the bodies and line it. Then you pin to secure. After that, you go to the sewing machine and then we'll sew. When we'll finish sewing, it'll be time to make to do the neck band. So here we've done the front, the left side, the bodies of the cardigan. We've done this. It's time for us to. I'll just finish off the sleeve. Your body's off the sleeve. edge to edge so now we've lined it we're going to just want to sh place it to that you see it Now we've lined it. You see the armhole lines perfectly and when we stitch. So let me show you this one that I've already stitched. You can see now here that the cross, you need a cross there to be perfect. 
because once it's perfect when the wearer wears uh, put it on it's not going to um, be uncomfortable that's why we try to line here um, the underarm arm first before we start um, lining the sides and um, the other before we start lining the sides and the other thing and you can see it here lines perfectly the cross is there make sure inside too it's neat and tight it's uh, lined perfectly because sorry the right side is lined perfectly but this is the side we are going to see when the wearer wears it that's the side we're going to see so you can see it lines perfectly it won't be uncomfortable that's why I would line it first before we stitch the side seam So I'll, I'll stitch the side. I'll stitch the side off camera. Then we'll progress to the knitting machine where we'll knit the neckband and the button holes. So it's time for us to knit the neckband of the cardigan. To knit the neckband, the instruction to knit the neckband, the instruction states that we should pick 24 stitches for the left front neck, 34 stitches for the back neck, and 24 stitches for the right front neck. That's about 82 needles. And we are going to need 14 rows of welt. So I've pushed 82 needles to upper working position or an working position. I just pushed 24 further down to upper working position. I'll tell you the reason why I pushed the 24. The reason I pushed the 24 is because going to since you're going to hang the neat wear and the instruction says we should pick we should that we need 24 needles for the front neck um the left front neck i don't want to exceed that needle those sorry i don't want to exceed those needles when i'm hanging the front neck when i finish hanging the front neck i'll push the i'll push the 34 forward and I'll hang the, the back and then push the remaining 24 forward and then I'll hang the other side of the front neck band for the neck band so I've um we'll just take a look at our row counter it's on zero 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 and then the stitch die I'm using the same stitch die setting I used for the welt to knit the welt So now we're going to hang our neckband. With the transfer tool, with your one needle transfer tool, you can use three needles transfer tool if you want to, but I'm using one. If you take a look at the edge of your knit wear, A look at the edge of your knit wear you will notice that it has um that has a kind of uh, crochet chain stitch edge you need to pick that that's the edge you're gonna pick and when you're picking make sure you pick the full stitch so insert and pick the full stitch 
you don't need to, you don't have to you don't pick one and leave the other like picking um sorry you don't pick this and leave the one at the the, the other stitch at the back you pick both stitches the complete stitch and then you hang it and make sure you pick it on a straight row if now you have a wonky um neck band I'll pick this first one and then we have the shoulder seam is I'll pick the last stitch there and hang it so that I can walk within the I can walk the neck bone within the middle stitches so I'm just gonna pick that and hang and remember straight stitch Oh, this not. So we've picked the left, um, the, I'm working with the right side facing me. I don't know if I did that, <laughs> but I'm working with the right side facing me. You can work with the wrong side facing you. It all depends on what you want to achieve. I like the edge it gives the, on the band when you work with the right side facing you. There's one kind of seam edge that it, uh, when you cast off, you have at that edge. So I want that effect. That's what I'm working so I'll push 34 needles to I'll push 34 needles forward so that I can work on the back okay. 
so here we have it and we're going to hang the back stitch same way and then we'll hang the other side of the this for the other side so we're going to hang the right side so when i finish hanging i'll put on the camera i finished picking the stitches for the neck band because of this first row that we're going to meet i'm going to t t put my stitch die on eight you know it was on seven to knit the welt i said we're going to use the second dot here but uh, for, because of the first row to knit the first row i'm going to put the stitch die on eight and after the first row i'll take it to the second dot before it the reason i'm doing the reason i'm doing that is because this first row is going to be so tight because uh, due to the stitches that we picked and also the second reason is that when we are knitting the second this first row we are going to pick the loop we are going to pick loop to form our welt for the neck band the neck we're going to form the neck band if you remember when we are knitting the welt for the sleeve and the waist we dub we knitted then picked the loops and hung it to make the welt because we are using a one needle bed this would have done the same for this without the without the eye cord that i'm going to use to knit would have done the same but because we are knitting on every needle it's not one by one needle now you're knitting every needle we need to make sure that the loop we are picking or the uh, row that we are going to pick is loop we need to make a mark on that place if we are using a different color yarn perhaps this um, for this neck band we are using something different like um this white yarn we won't have needed we won't need this uh, i um ravel code to help us locate the to make a marking for the uh, row that we are going to pick its loop if you don't have a, an extra ravel cord because you are going to do same for the button band and for the buttonhole band if we don't have you had you don't have a second ravel cord or a spare one you can use contrast thread and you pull them out or you pull it out after you finish um, knitting so now hold both hold them together the the yarn and the ravel cord hold them together i'm going to put it i'm going to put it in the yarn feeder holding them together we're going to knit don't forget to leave your row counter on zero 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 so that it start counting and once you get to the end of the once you get to the end remove the ravel cord you can you leave the yarn in but you remove the ravel cord from the yarn feeder leave only the yarn you don't you don't need the ravel cord to need the second row for you it will be very difficult to remove the ravel cord then when you if you need the second row I'm just pushing that out because it didn't uh... so we're going to need 20 it said 14 rows of world so we need to need um that's um 28 so just take the camera back and we need uh, 28 rows 
Remember the second row, only the yarn needs no ravel cord. I forgot to state that you are supposed to re, uh, change the stitch on uh, when you are knitting you are knitting the second row. You have to change your stitch die back to the second row. No, I stated it in the beginning. So I've knitted twenty eight rows. Forgot to remind you. Okay, yes, that's it. that's the word. Forgot to remind that we are supposed to change the stitch that, but I did that on my own. All right, so we need to pick. You can now see the row we we have to pick. That's the reason. So, just going to take it. We are going to pick it and hang it on this coordinating needle. You don't need, you don't have to pick this up. I don't know if you can see it properly. Let's go down a bit. If you notice, we have one upper row. Um, we have a contrast here and appearing up here, and we have the one down. The one down is the one we are supposed to, we are to pick, not this up, up one, upper one. No, you want to pick this one down. Because you need this edge to, you need to enclose this edge in. So you bend it and you pick. This time you don't need to pick the ravel cord. You just pick only the yarn. Then you hang it. Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were in the... Let me do that again. I didn't know the camera wasn't... Uh... I'm going to do it again. The camera was... Um... Okay, so we have to pick the loops. And then you hang.
So that's how we're going to pick. You pick every. I'll pick a few, then I'll turn off the camera. Oh, I missed one here. I'm just going to move it. I missed one, so I'm moving these stitches. So we'll continue picking the loops like so until we've complete we've picked all loops to the end i'll put on the camera when i finish picking the loops then we'll cast off we have to pick it all the way to the end and you have to take care in picking them you don't want to leave any stitch behind After that, we'll cast off. But I'll put on the camera when we, when I finish picking the loops. Before we cast off. We have finished picking the loops. So I'll finish picking the loops. And you can see, if we go closer, you will see the. Show it, show it. Just going to knit one row from right to left to lock the stitches in, and then we'll cast off. So this is the brown ravel cord. You can see it here. Take my yarn out of the carriage and I'll start casting off. Same uh, casting off is the same casting off method.
So I've casted off this. And I'll after we finish casting off, we we'll have to remove. You can do it later on to remove the ravel cord. So I finished um, the neck band. I'm just going to take break the yarn from here. Thread it through the last loop and leave the later on. I remove the ravel cord. So here's our neck band. So here's our neck band, and you can still see the ravel cord. So here's our neck band. And you can see the ravel cord if you bend it. I'm going to remove the ravel cord as I said earlier. I'm going to remove it after we finish knitting. Okay, before we finish, uh, before we do the band, I'll, I should, I'm removing it. I'll remove it now for the band.